This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I had no idea when I got a call about this piece that someone found in a dumpster, the amount of work and frustration that was waiting for me. I had to replace pieces of drawers with nap joinery, which I've never done before. That was an adventure, let me tell you. I had to replace drawer bottoms, deal with crappy old finishes, a bunch of general repairs, I ended up not liking the color that I picked, and even though I really wanted to use these antique pulls, they tested positive for lead, and it was just kind of one thing after another. So saddle up. <laughs> My name is Angie, and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint, and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. So a friend of Andrea's who runs a garbage bin business contacted her and said he found this dresser that I might be interested in, did I want to have a look? At first glance, this looks like it could be Cordesan Oak, sometimes called Tiger Oak or somewhat incorrectly Tiger Wood. The actual proper name is Cordesan Oak, but it's none of those things. This piece is actually pine with a faux painted wood grain on it. This became quite popular in the 1700s and 1800s, and even into the 1920s and 30s during the Depression when materials were harder to come by. And some of the pieces from back then with this faux wood grain were actual pieces of art. Honestly though, the majority of these pieces that you'll come across that are faux painted are not works of art and they're not museum quality. So that makes it a perfect candidate for painting if just cleaning the piece isn't going to be enough. This keyhole escutcheon is original, clearly these knobs and pulls are not. My best guess on when this piece was made, I would say sometime in the very late 1800s. It has this beautiful nap joinery on the sides, although it's not in the best condition. It's quite dirty, and at some point in the life of this piece, there was a fairly considerable woodworm issue. There doesn't appear to be any active woodworm concerns, so it's time to take this piece apart and I will be replacing some of the parts of it that were affected by the woodworm over the years. Luckily, for me anyway, I haven't come across a lot of wood boring insects or worms. I know they can be more prevalent depending on where you live, as well as the types of furniture that you're working on. This piece is quite dirty, so the first thing I'm going to do is, like I said, take it all apart and then I'm going to vacuum it thoroughly and clean it off with some degreasing cleaner. Having a look here at these wooden casters, these are definitely original to the piece, but unfortunately two of them are completely broken and don't have wheels, so I'm going to be removing these. And I found a little friend, <laughs> so I'm just going to escort him out of the building and continue pulling these casters out. Sometimes with these older pieces, I like to replace the casters when I can, but these were so rusted in, they were difficult to get out. This is a hard angle for me to because we're pulling it up. Yeah. You want me to, uh... I can't break the edges of this though. That's the problem. <laughs> Ooh. I hate to see those pieces. Oh. And yet it's working. I'm not squeezing it tightly. It's like it's not even all the way tight. <sighs> Who are you? Can you get your work cut out for you? This is frustrating. After a long battle, I finally got those rusty casters off. So now it's time to look at the finish. While I don't love this faux finish, it does have an inherent historical significance, I should say, even on the cheaper pieces. But simply cleaning this piece is not going to be enough to preserve it and, I guess, do it justice moving forward. And for anyone who thinks that this is not a faux finish, I'm going to show you here how easily this paint comes off with a little bit of lacquer thinner. So what I'm planning to do is strip the top, see what kind of wood I have to deal with underneath, and then I'll be painting the rest of the piece. So with the first stripping here of the finish, you can see there's still a little bit of the pattern underneath. That's just where the dye really absorbed into that old pine. 
I did a second treatment of stripper and that's when it all came off. Now this top has some discolorations, it has some old stains. Normally I would use oxalic acid to remove them, but I'm not even going to be sanding this top with a power sander, I'm just hand sanding it. I want to keep all of these little things and marks and I'm actually just going to stain right over this. This is not typical for how I do things, but I think for this piece it's kind of <laughs> the direction I want to go with this. I'm actually going to be layering a couple of different stains and a couple of different <laughs> finishes over that to get the depth and sort of faux patina, if you will, um, that I'm looking for. This piece was actually made in Nova Scotia. It's nothing fancy or elaborate, and while it does have pretty clean lines and it would be easy to make this piece look almost brand new with paint, I don't really want to do that. I want this to look old, I want it to look a little bit beat up, but it definitely needed <laughs> refinishing. So you see as I'm wiping back this first stain, you can still see a lot of the discoloration underneath. That's okay, I'm going to be doing another stain on top of this afterwards. While that first layer is drying though, I'm going to go ahead and start scuff sanding the rest of the piece. I don't need to get down to bare wood, I just need to get everything nice and smooth. So once the top had dried, I went in with a General Finishes gel stain. Now the first stain was a penetrating stain, this is a gel stain, they're both oil based though, no issues. While that layer of stain was drying, I went in with this Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Primer. Now I don't really care about the paint part, I just wanted the primer and what this is going to do is make sure that my paint application is uniform and doesn't absorb into these few areas where there is bare wood. It doesn't have to be clear, it doesn't even have to be a spray, you could use a roll-on or brush-on primer. This just happened to be what I had. The sides of these drawers were actually really, really rough, and that's not that uncommon from that era. But you can see this beautiful joinery, <laughs> and I'm laughing looking at it because it was not beautiful and fun to try to recreate it. I pulled off the old lock. It's quite rusty. I'm actually going to put it into a bath of rust remover. Now this was sent to me from my Amazon wishlist from a viewer, so thank you so much for this. If you were the one who sent it to me, I don't believe I got a note with it. I put just enough in to cover it and then I just loosely set the cover on and slid this out of the way and let it basically soak overnight. I do have a stash of antique keys, so I'm hoping that I'll have something that fits it. There's also some minor repairs I need to make, such as areas where the wood is chipped or lifted. Nothing, a little bit of wood glue and some clamps can't fix. So like I said initially, I am going to be painting this. Now, what color? That's the question. I have my go-tos for this style and some great options. I've got some different types of sage green, some nice blues, <laughs> this pink color that I haven't used yet. Some of their newer colors like oakum is absolutely beautiful, everett's beautiful, and hazelwood would be nice too. Bayberry is always a winner. I had so many options here, but then I realized that a while back I tried to use this color, blue pine, on a piece. You may remember this hutch and I started to paint it and I just I wasn't liking how it looked with the dark top. So what I opted to do was paint one side in one color, paint one side in another color and pick which I like. But I couldn't decide between those two either so I mixed them together and came up with this whole new custom color. And that was what I ended up going with. I always said that I would eventually try blue pine again and I think that's what I'm going to use here on this piece. 
a while back I was going to attempt a restoration on this piece here, but it was in really poor shape. It tested positive for lead, which isn't the end of the world, but considering all the other issues it had, it just was a no-go. But it had these amazing antique candles. So that's an option for the piece I'm working on. I also have this set of handles, but they're covered in multiple layers of paint. They were made probably roughly around the same time period, but I think I'm going to save that first set for more of an East Lake style piece. And I'm going to try to remove the paint from these handles for the piece I'm working on now. I left these in a pot of boiling water for some time. You can see the black paint just peels right off. But those multiple layers of paint underneath, there's a couple types of white and sort of an ivory or beige color. Those were just not coming off. And I was pretty sure at that point it's because they were painted with a lead-based paint. So I did test them and sure enough they tested positive for lead. Not the end of the world, it happens all the time. You can remove it, you just have to be a little bit careful with it. But I think for this piece, Looking at the original escutcheon, I'm just going to buy some modern handles for it that are made to look old. And in fact, this style that I picked from Lee Valley is probably fairly close to what this would have initially had anyway. The only difference being the original poles would have been that very thin, sort of flimsy, almost tin-like material. If you work on furniture long enough, you'll, you'll come across those. They're not the best quality, so <laughs> even modern hardware on this is a step up. I started my first coat of paint and then while that was drying I went ahead with my next layer of color slash finish on the top. Now, this is a stain and polyurethane blend and the color is antique walnut. And this is going to add a little bit of warmth to the top as well as some extra color. While I'm not a huge fan of this product on its own, I really love it for layering and it's almost like faux patina. I just, I don't know, I really like it for this particular situation. I took a break from working on the piece for a little while, came downstairs here to my key stash. Now this lock is very specific, it's got this post in the middle which means it needs a key with a hole in it. I did find this one, it's not a perfect fit, it's close and it actually will open the lock. I just added a little bit of WD-40 just to sort of lubricate this a little bit and then it opened much better. The problem is that the key isn't quite long enough to close it again. I did have one other key with a hole in the end of it but it's just slightly too long. Oh, if I had more time I might try to sort of file that down somehow. I'll show you inside what I mean by it not being long enough. So you can see here that the key just catches the mechanism and starts to push it and then it slips. It needs to be about a millimeter longer. <laughs> Nacho was absolutely zero help with my dilemma with the keys. Rude. So here's where I'm at at this point. I've got now two coats of paint on which was plenty to cover. I'm using some of Fusion's beeswax finish over the paint and we'll eventually do an antique glazing over that but for now I just need to seal this paint and give a nice light sealant so that when I add my antiquing glaze it doesn't stick to the paint. I probably should have waited to paint the fronts of the drawers until I had already finished with my repairs, but for some reason I didn't. I was already a bit frustrated with this project by this point, so I didn't really think about the sequence, but that's okay. I need to glue this bottom panel back together, and probably the hardest part of this entire project was recreating this board, which was broken. What makes this so much more difficult than a normal side of a drawer is this nap joinery on the end. And you can really see here the damage from the woodworm or whatever insect it was that was actually in here. Again, I'm positive there was no active infestations. This was all probably many, many years ago. I've never done nap joinery before. This is all new to me. Do not judge me. <laughs> I'm learning here as I go. I 
I need to start by marking where these features are going to be. So there's that little dado here on the end, which I need to mark, and then I'm going to do my best to trace out the rounded part of the nap joinery. A lot of these pieces were broken off, so I had to kind of slide it forward. I also noticed that the board that I'm using to recreate this is thicker than the original board, so I need to actually cut that down as well. I'm using a center hole punch to mark where the actual pegs will be, and then cut this out. And my camera wasn't quite working properly, so I didn't catch cutting this, but this is that piece cut down to the right thickness. I don't have a band saw, I don't have a jointer or a planer, so everything I'm doing here has to be on the table saw. I also need to recreate one of the back pieces for the drawers, which was actually pretty easy. One of the drawer bottoms had to be replaced entirely, so instead of using boards that are going to be prone to cracking and splitting, I'm opting to use this poplar plywood. So here you'll notice I'm again cutting out <laughs> the rounded parts of nap joinery, this time with a coping saw. And the reason for that is I screwed up the first one. The holes I had drilled for those little pegs or dowels just didn't line up properly, so I had to do it again. Like I said, this is my first time ever doing this, so, you know, it's difficult. Now this isn't the piece I recreated, I'll show you that one shortly, but the rest of the joinery has these little gaps, and I'm just using some epoxy wood to fill those holes. It's just going to help keep things from moving around over time. I'm going to be staining all of the wood on the drawers a little bit darker anyway, so everything will be nice and smooth. The drawer bottoms that I'm keeping have to be sanded down completely. There are a few stains on them, I'm not overly worried about that. I'm going to be staining them with wood stain anyway. You guys, this piece is so far removed from what I normally do. And there were many times that I wanted to put it back into the garbage because it was just taking so long and nothing was going right. And I was hesitating even showing you guys this as a video, but you know what? This is reality. <laughs> we all run into pieces like this where it just takes so much longer than you'd think or you spend way more money or time on it. And if it's a piece you're looking to sell, not something you want to keep, then sometimes you just need to know when to stop <laughs> and just get it done and don't worry about it. I needed to do something with this lock mechanism. It's quite tarnished. Um, I recently got a couple of different colors of this rub and buff stuff. I could have just spray painted this, but I wanted it to have a bit of a modeled finish, much like the hardware. So what I'm going to do is do a couple of different colors, let that dry up overnight, and then I'll go in with probably an antiquing wax or, or a stain or something to put over the top of it to kind of give it that, that modeled look. And now it's just time to finish up all these odds and ends putting the drawers back together, adding just a little bit of an antiquing glaze. This is gonna be very subtle. I'm just wiping a tiny bit on, rubbing it in. All it's gonna do is kind of minimize that freshly painted look. What's nice about glazes and antiquing waxes is that you can use as little or as much as you want. Time to add the new hardware. For a final top coat, I did four coats of Minwax Wipe on Poly in a clear satin, sanding lightly in between layers. This gives a silky smooth, almost glass-like finish. Mm -hmm. 
So things didn't work out with a key for the lock on this piece, but I'm still going to add it back. I'm just adding a little bit of antiquing wax and you can see it's not a perfect match, but it's close enough. So just going over the main products I used, I used circa 1850 to strip the old finish off. I used this Rust-Oleum spray paint plus primer underneath my paint. I painted in Fusion Mineral Paint, the color was Blue Pine, and then I added some beeswax finish on top of that. I used this Art Minds Antiquing Glaze over the paint. And on the top, my first stain was Minwax Dark Walnut, which is a penetrating stain. And I used the Java Gel Stain by General Finishes. And this Varathane Stain and Polyurethane in Antique Walnut to add a little bit of warmth to that. For the drawers and the drawer bottoms, I stained it in Minwax Aged Oak. And then I sealed that as well as the top with this Wipe On Poly. This is the antiquing wax and the rub and buff that I used on the lock. Well, this little chest of drawers turned out to be a huge test for me. A test in learning new skills, a test in patience, which I thought I had a lot of until I got this piece, and a test in letting go. When you do this for a living, not every piece is going to be exactly what you would put in your own home. Like I mentioned, I wasn't overly happy with the color. It's not that the color is not nice, I just, I don't know, maybe it's just not my color, but I really struggled with it. I considered repainting it, and in the end I decided to just leave it as it was. I had already put all this time and effort into it, and my hope is that someone will love this and it will go on to live many more years. Just before we get into the reveal, I want to take you back a couple of months when I made my own watercolor sort of inks out of literally nature from my backyard. And I made these three little paintings and I've had so many people ask me how they can purchase prints. So immediately after the reveal, I'm going to share some exciting news about that. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. I am super excited to tell you about the website that I'm currently building with Squarespace. Squarespace is an amazing online platform that allows you to create your own website. It allows you to connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. For me, I've had many people ask about buying some prints of mine and possibly some merch. This is going to be a huge part of my new website that I'm currently working on. I'll be able to come on and browse through what I have listed for sale. You'll also be able to find all my links to my other social media platforms. 
I know building a website can seem daunting. Let me tell you, this was the easiest thing I've ever done. If you want to get started with your own website, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial where you can set everything up. And then when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash transcend furniture and you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or your own domain name. 